We came to Little Calumet, Prelude, written by Madeline Hansley Campbell. A woman whose brown hair was splashed with white sat in her rocking chair on the huge front porch extending three quarters of the way around the pillared gingerbread house on Holiday Island. She was watching the panorama of the boats chugging by as well as the activity on the riverbank in front of her. A tall blonde man was swimming in front of the island with his four children. All were shouting gleefully as they converted on the bank, then dove into the inviting water only to emerge again and again. John Stasco, the father, climbed from the river, wiping his hair from his eyes, and turned to the woman on the porch. It must seem laughable to you, Madeline. So many people have spent time here since you've lived on this island. They've all repeated the same antics, only the faces are different. Madeline Hanley smiled at him, thinking how right he is. A shout from near the head of the island caught her attention. Her teenage son, John, together with Fred Gettner's sons, was swinging by a rope far out over the water to a cannonball into it, it with a geyser splash. All four boys interrupted their fun just long enough to wave to tour boats slowly put putting up the river. Cameras in the hands of tourists focused on the children as they dove into the huge waves running towards the shore. Some of the passengers seemed to be watching the broad-shouldered man standing on a rock at the front of the island as he pulled out a bass from the river. Beside him, a slender woman clapped in delight. Ed and Elaine Sasko had arrived a half hour before in their sailboat, the Pollyanna, and had immediately cast fish lines into the water. Madeline noted them showing their catch to Steve, her older son, as he came up the path from the boathouse. A typical day at Holiday Island, originally called Little Calumet, had begun. The setting and activities had been the same for 30 years. How wild John Sasko knew. He and his brother Ed had been coming here to pale with Steve since childhood. Hundreds of visitors have come to our camp and sailed away back to Main Shore. Many have returned again and again for renewal. Some come no more caught in the meshes of the city life or the tides of time. They were like the freighters steaming past the island to disappear around the bend towards Alexandria Bay. Their signatures are in my logbook, and although its pages are yellow and brittle, I can still envision their faces. Still remember the part they played in our life at camp. They appeared before my eyes as though they were present this very day. A kaleidoscope of faces woven into the tapestry of life broad, open, narrow, brooding, laughter crinkled, wrinkled in the unfurrowed of youth. As I sat gazing into the river, a collage of those faces swam before my eyes, only to be obliterated by the wash from tour boats floating by. Do those visitors ever recall Holiday Island? Where are they now? Where's the woman who feared the island would wash away in the storm. Or whatever happened to the crew of the homemade houseboat, quit your belly aching, whom we sheltered for a couple of days.